Morley was a mere four feet tall and four stone seven, 28.5 kilos in today's language, at age 14. In those early childhood years, he earned pocket money delivering newspapers from the high back of a heavy draft horse. He'd been doing the job for some years when the day came that a renowned racing trainer, Tom Ty, happened to spot the small-framed youngster and offered him the chance to be a jockey. He quickly grew and put on weight, but for many years would be able to ride comparatively light, and as his skills developed and natural talent bloomed, he became a precious commodity in WA racing. He won the first of three Perth Cups in his initial year as an apprentice in 1921, steering Earl of Seafield to victory. He was still a teenager when he won his second on Mercato in 1924. Both wins were for Tom Ty. Morley's first riding premiership came swiftly, 1925-26 with 42 wins. Then came his dominant period with premierships in 1926-27, 39 wins, 27-28, 50, and 28-29, 40. In the latter season, the brilliant young hoop won his third and final Perth Cup on Cool Barrow for legendary trainer J.J. Kelly. In taking out the 1931-32 Premiership, Morley rode a state record 70 winners in the one season and there were far less races then. By his mid-twenties, Morley had ridden over 250 winners, with Tom Ty the greatest beneficiary. However, he was also the leading go-to rider for J.J. Kelly and Eurythmics famous owner Sir Ernest Lee Steer. Kelly, who wrote a newspaper column, once described Morley as being one of the two best jockeys he'd ever seen, the other being Wally Sibrit. Morley also won an Adelaide Cup on Repeak in 1922, won races in Sydney and Melbourne, and in India, where he spent five years during World War II. Morley once piloted four successive wins at Helena Vale, July 28, 1928. While his achievements were many, Bobby Morley was possessed of a somewhat colourful nature that at times got him into trouble with racing's powers that be. He collected a number of hefty suspensions and disqualifications and consequently spent a significant amount of time on the sidelines. In the latter years of his career, his weight tended to climb during these interludes and Morley would often use the brakes to work mining concessions on the Kalgoorlie gold fields, firstly because he enjoyed it and secondly to help keep him trim. Gold prospecting wasn't Morley's only interest, however, away from racing. At various stages of his life, he had a plethora of hobbies, including photography, motor racing, motor boating, yachting and fishing. He was also an amateur musician. Athletically, he was well above average, a talented tennis player, was captain of the jockeys football team and captain of a Belmont cricket team. He played golf and squash as well. During over 30 years in the saddle, however, he retired in 1952, Bobby Morley won practically every feature race available on the Perth calendar of racing, at least once. One final piece of trivia, is that Morley had an association with a stayer called Second Wind that bears special mention. He won a WA Derby and a Metropolitan Handicap on the horse, but was not on his back when he ran second in the 1930 Melbourne Cup at odds of 50 to 1. The winner of the race was Farlap. <laughs>